I want you to stop and ask yourself, am I truly happy in my marriage? And if the answer is no, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're any less grateful for your partner, that your marriage is doomed. It just is a wake-up call that something needs to change. And if you're not happy, ask yourself, would you want to be married to yourself right now? If the answer is no, then you know where the work needs to be done. Work on that. If you are really committed to your marriage, becoming the best that it can be, stay in your own lane. Become the person you'd want to be married to. Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. As a marriage coach who's been through and still going through the trenches of motherhood myself, I get it. Life gets busy and sometimes your relationship takes a backseat. But guess what? You can feel like a couple while raising kids and I'm here to help. Join me each week here as we dive into the messy but fulfilling world of marriage and motherhood. From navigating conflict to reigniting that spark, we're going to chat about it all. So if you're juggling mom life with wife life, this podcast is for you. And hey, if you love what you hear, I'd be so grateful if you could rate and review this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Here's this week's episode. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. So... Today, I wanted to address something that I think more of us need to be talking about when it comes to marriage. And with New Year's coming up, you know, the time of year where everyone's taking a look at how their life is going, what goals they want to work towards in the new year, what they haven't been happy about, what they are happy about, and starting fresh and feeling hopeful about what the new year brings. I wanted to talk about something that I've been hearing a lot of lately and how marriage feels so hard after kids. Marriage has its challenges. My marriage has challenges, right? Just because I'm a marriage coach doesn't make my marriage exempt from its issues. None of us are perfect. And I want to just dive into why I don't think marriage is hard. And why I wish people would stop saying that. The truth is that marriage has its difficulties, but it doesn't mean that it's hard and it doesn't have to be hard. Marriage has hard moments, just like motherhood and just being a person alive. We all have challenges, but I don't think it's fair to say marriage as a whole is hard. Marriage has some pretty amazing moments and it has its hard moments. It's not like a blanket generalization that the whole entire thing is hard. So I want to dive into why it feels hard after kids and the common challenges that we experience in our marriage as a result of adding more love to the family, right? Expanding the family. And this conversation is inspired by two different things. I wanted to be able to be truly present during this winter break. I've got kids at home and I wanted to take a look at what was the most popular episode on the show. And it was actually episode number two, which is why marriage feels hard after kids. And it's been a whole year and a half since I have started this show. And so while listening to it, a lot of it, still resonates. A lot of it is still very helpful. And I wanted to re-record it instead of just having it show up as an encore episode because I have a fresh take on things. And then secondly, what inspired this conversation is actually a conversation with someone I was talking to. She and her husband are going through it. They have a special needs child and they are experiencing a lot of challenges right now. They've even brought up divorce. They've brought up how they don't like each other right now and how they wish things would be different, but they don't know where to go from here. And that even though they don't like each other and have brought up divorce, that they still wouldn't choose to do this with anyone else. And so I wanted to blend the two my conversation with this person, as well as bringing back elements of episode two to help you through your next stage of your marriage. Okay. So let's talk about why relationships are hard in general, even just without 
the idea of kids, right? Without kids coming into the mix and adding in their own stuff. So relationships are hard because they're actually our biggest teachers in life. Our, our parents were our teachers, our significant other, really big teacher, our kids. They're all mirrors to the growth and the work that we have to heal through. And based on our own unique upbringing and experiences, we all have different ideas on what being in a relationship looks like. We've got different expectations, what we think is normal, what we think is healthy, sometimes mixing those two up, thinking what's normal is healthy because it's what we're most familiar with. Whatever you grew up witnessing as a child with your parents' marriage, your relatives, your aunts, uncles, grandparents, the relationships that you are surrounded with have a really strong influence over how you show up in your marriage today from what you think love looks like, how you show love, how to communicate, how to approach conflict, what it looks to prioritize your relationship. And that's just your end of the relationship. Then there's your parents' relationship with you, right? How did they communicate with you? How did they handle conflict with you? How did they react to you when you expressed your emotions? How did they respond when you were happy, joyful, excited? And then how were they when you were angry, sad, and frustrated? Did they welcome and embrace the full spectrum of your emotions? Or were they selective with what was okay for you to express? And how did they handle the ones that weren't okay, in their opinion? Did you get yelled at, criticized, dismissed for having certain emotions? For me personally, it was not okay to cry or be upset or be frustrated. And I've heard from many people that this is true for them as well, right? Hearing phrases like, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about or stop crying, you're embarrassing me or don't cry, it's okay, you're fine. These are all common phrases that we hear from the previous generation. And that gives you a really big insight into how they had their emotions handled and navigated when they were growing up, right? So it's just all of us just passing down what we think is normal. And many parents in the past generations do that because they're really uncomfortable with the emotions outside of what society accepts, right? Those quote unquote positive emotions. Those are the okay ones. Right. And we learned this from a really early age, too, when we're babies, when we're little kids, when we smile, they love it. You see that immediate reaction with their face smiling back at you and they're all about it. But when you cried or threw a tantrum, they were quick to show that they weren't OK with that. And so we internalize that and we think, OK, well, these aren't OK and these ones are OK. We start to shame those emotions. Right. And. Their discomfort often shows up as anger, frustration, anything that we didn't have a positive experience with. And it triggers them. And it makes it really difficult for them to support people when they're so dysregulated emotionally, right? When we're uncomfortable, that's when all those like weird feelings come up. And depending on what we've seen other people do in response to those situations, that's what we tend to mimic. And as the generation that I think is the generation of cycle breakers, right? We're the generation of cycle breakers. We're like, okay, well, I don't like how I was handled in those moments of anger and frustration and difficulties and challenges in life. And I don't want to do that for my kids. But I don't know how to be different because when I'm triggered, that's what comes out. I end up being like, my parents. So what do I do? Right? So we're caught in that messy middle where we don't like what we saw. We want something different, but we don't know how. And just because we weren't raised with the style that we would have preferred if we could go back in time, right? We now know like, oh, I wish my parents would have validated me more. I wish my parents would have given me more compliments or handled my emotions with more care and made it okay to feel these things and taught me how to communicate more healthily, taught me how to navigate these emotions. 
without feeling bad about it, right? Like I used to feel horrible about crying and I cry a lot. Anytime there would be an argument in a relationship, I would just start crying and then I would feel bad for crying and it was not good. And it's not their fault, right? We all wish our parents parented us differently at times. And as parents, we now know that it's tough to do this. But we do our best for our kids as much as we can, right? We're all human. We're going to mess up. And our parents aren't exempt from that. They did what they knew to do and they did their best. And while I don't blame my parents for having such a strong impact on the challenges I regularly work through in my marriage and the kind of mom that I want to be, what they did and said did play a big role on how I view things and how I handle things. And it's my responsibility to grow through these challenges if I desire to change it. And that's a tough pill to swallow, right? When I first realized that, that was a tough pill to swallow because it's much easier to blame people. But in the long run, it doesn't benefit anyone, right? It's not like our parents intentionally try to screw us up. But yet, as parents, we know that no matter how hard we try, we're going to somehow screw it up. And so it's up to us to just try and minimize that as much as we can while giving ourselves grace. This is just our side of things, right? Our partner has their own unique set of challenges, experiences, and upbringing. He's got his own set of expectations, perspectives, based on all of that. And when you put these two together, you're bound to come up against some really hard moments from recognizing that you express love differently, handle conflict differently, trigger each other in how you communicate when you're upset or unhappy about something, or even the different parenting styles that you might be bringing into the relationship. And then put that on top of learning how to become a parent yourself. Even as someone who's been in the role of a mother figure for my stepson, who's about to turn 14, I've been in his life since he was one. And we also have a seven and a three-year-old, right? I still feel like I'm always learning about who I am as a parent and who I want to become. And if you think about it, Parenting is always a new adventure. We're always new to being parents of our kids being the age that they are. We're always encountering new challenges, new boundaries being pushed, situations we've never come across before. And then multiply that by the number of kids you have. And then there's kids who need more support. I've got a kid with ADHD, a kid with sensory processing disorder and anxiety. And I also have a kid who's really emotional. So sometimes I feel like we have more than three kids. Then there's the growing responsibility that comes with adding kids into the mix, right? It's not just raising them to be great humans, which in itself is a huge job. There's the never-ending laundry, the dishes, the cleaning up, the creating magical moments and memories, the planning, so much planning, right? Before kids, life was way simpler. We thought we were busy, but jokes on us, we weren't actually really that busy. We still had time to make special plans for our partners and go out on dates and trips. After kids, having The time and energy to make special plans seems like a distant memory. It seems like a stretch goal, right? The focus gets put on the kids and the marriage gets put on the back burner. So instead of doing nice things for each other just because, you're just getting through the day looking forward to getting the kids in bed so you can chill, decompress by watching your favorite show, reading your favorite book, playing games on your phone, diving into your favorite hobby, or catching up on work or housework. Maybe you tell yourself, once the kids get older, then we'll get back to doing the things we once did. Then I'll start putting in more effort into the marriage. Because theoretically, you should have more energy when the kids are older, right? They'll be more independent. You'll have more time back to yourself. But what I've noticed in my life and my parents' lives and my clients' lives is what usually ends up happening is other things fill in that time. So kids start having more extracurriculars, which means we got to take them there. And they start having birthday parties to attend. They've got play dates. They've got projects. They've got big homework assignments, tests to study for that we're helping them with. And in the season of parenthood, it's really easy to get caught up in the busyness of parenting and let it completely replace all that extra time you thought you'd have once the kids got older. So instead of nurturing your marriage, you kind of just hit pause, hoping it'll be okay by the time you do have the time and energy to commit to the relationship. But marriage doesn't work like that. And I learned that the hard way. And if you're thinking, shit, 
I'm totally doing this. Give yourself grace. You're doing the best you can. And sometimes what you really need is a fresh perspective to notice that responsibilities have replaced all the romance in your marriage. And it's exactly this transition that has created the disconnect in your marriage that you may have normalized because of all the other couples you're surrounded with. They also don't nurture their marriage. They also fight a lot. They've also made their focus their kids. But normal does not always mean healthy. Normal is just what we think is okay because of the people around us. If they're doing it too, or if they're experiencing the same things too, then it must be fine because maybe it's just something that needs to be accepted as a part of life. It's almost like a way to lessen the pain because misery loves company. But this concept of what's normal is not always good for the marriage. Constantly arguing and not growing from conflict is not normal for everyone. Neither is feeling like you don't know how to communicate with each other. Having a difficult time resolving conflict. Having parenting and household responsibilities completely fall on the wife. Or resenting your partner so much that you don't want to hang out with them. None of this is normal across the board. It might be normal in your circle, your community. This was certainly the normal I grew up with. But it's not normal in my marriage today. And I'd argue to say that none of this is healthy. What's healthy for your marriage is for you to to learn healthy communication, to prioritize deep connection and have a supportive partnership with each other. So if all the things that I listed before this is what's normal for you, I want you to look at who you're surrounding yourself with. Do you have couples that you regularly spend time with that show you that it could be different? Or are they just validating that what you're going through is okay and keeping you stuck in a kind of marriage that you wish was different, but you excuse and settle for because everyone around you is going through the same thing? Your marriage doesn't have to be like this. And if you're resonating with this, I want you to stop and ask yourself, am I truly happy in my marriage? And if the answer is no, it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're any less grateful for your partner. It doesn't mean that your marriage is doomed. It just is a wake-up call that something needs to change. And if you're not happy, what I want you to ask yourself, instead of being like, well, I would be happy if he did this, or I would be happy if he stopped doing these things, I want you, instead of looking outside of yourself, which is like the go-to for many of us, I want you to ask yourself, would I want to be married to me right now? Because this is really telling, right? This is exactly what came up in my conversation with the person that inspired this episode. And her answer was, no, I would not want to be married to me right now. And this is very much along the lines of staying in your own lane. Instead of focusing on how your partner isn't enough right now, isn't being who you need them to be in order for you to be the wife that you want to be. I want you to pay attention to, are you being the wife that you want to be? Would you want to be married to yourself right now? If the answer is no, then you know where the work needs to be done. Work on that because chances are he's probably doing the same thing. Well, once she stops nagging me, once she stops getting so angry all the time, once she stops yelling at me or criticizing me, or once she stops throwing it in my face how much she does, then I will plan more dates, talk to her more, want to hang out with her. If both of you are approaching the marriage like that, with that type of energy, you're going to stay stuck, of course, because neither of you are budging. So instead, if you are really committed to your marriage, becoming the best that it can be, Stay in your own lane. Become the person you'd want to be married to. Step into their shoes. How would you shift things? How you approach things? How you communicate? Having kids changes us. And sometimes that means we give the shittiest version of ourselves to our partner because we have forgotten who we are, how to take care of ourselves, or how to be the kind of partner we want to be. So if you two have let life distract you from what you wanted for your life together, here's your cue to realign to that dream. And maybe that dream has evolved. And that's okay because we don't know what life is like when you have kids before you have kids, right? So what's important for you is for you to get back on the same page with what you're working towards. Bring back that sense of teamwork and be great teammates to each other. 
this came up in the conversation too. Her husband asked her, hey, do you think that we're a great team? And she said, yeah, we're a great team that does great teamwork, but we are not great teammates to each other. And I loved that. You could be crushing the parenting thing together and the roommate situation, but if you're not treating each other with support, kindness, compassion, and you're being mean to each other, that's not being a great teammate to each other. Just getting things done, right? So have fun together. Be supportive. Be kind. Be compassionate. Bring back that romance, right? Grow your intimacy. Consider what challenges you need to work through to get back on the same page. Do you need to take better care of yourself so that you have the capacity to be the woman, wife, and mom you want to be? Do you need to work on your communication skills to share what you feel and need without starting or escalating an argument? It takes two people to argue. Conflict is not bad in your relationship. Conflict is essential. It's important. That's what helps your relationship grow. It's what helps intimacy deepen. But arguing is completely a choice. And at any point, you can stop it. You can de-escalate it from changing how you approach conversations to noticing, oh, this conversation is going south real quick. How do I want to redirect this conversation so that it stays productive, so that it helps us instead of leaving us want to just kill each other, right? Do you need to prioritize your partnership so that it could stay alive and well and not feel like strangers who don't know how to talk to each other or hang out once the kids grow up and move out? Think about these things and start doing something about it. Talk about it with your partner, come up with a plan, work with someone. This is what I do as a marriage coach. I help you see what things need to be worked on so that you can get through this hump, this feeling of being stuck, like I don't know what to do. We're just having a really hard time understanding each other and having a hard time feeling motivated to even want to hang out with them feeling resentful or having a hard time not showing up as someone who yells and criticizes and blames and gets passive aggressive or shuts down when things get heated. That's what working with a marriage professional helps with. And if you're wanting help with realigning, then I've got a free masterclass for you that'll help you do just that. So this masterclass is called the number one conversation married couples need to have but aren't. And this will help you get pointed in the direction to creating that aligned vision for you two to work towards. And when you do this, it'll not only help you prevent future arguments from happening, but it'll also help you feel like a team again and give you back that time to bring that romance back so you two can feel like a couple again and not just co-parenting roommates. And this is a great start to noticing what changes can we make? So if you're stuck right now and you want something different, you want to feel like you two can have fun together again. You two do understand each other. You two do have that deep connection. And I'm talking like emotional and physical. Check out this masterclass. You've literally got nothing to lose. It's free. It's I think 20 minutes long and it comes with a workbook. And this is a great way to know what areas you need to start focusing on as a couple And if after watching this masterclass, you're like, okay, now we know what to work on. And you're wondering, I don't know how to start this. I don't know how to do all this. Then reach out. Okay. I would love to help you work through all the challenges and game plan with you and help you bring your marriage back to what you want it to be, where you're laughing together until your cheeks hurt where you feel like you are truly close and know how to navigate conflict. And there are more good days than hard days. Okay. There's always going to be hard days, but I want you to have a really high percentage of good days. You deserve that. So does your spouse. So do your kids, right? And at the end of the day, you deserve to have life feel easier. And doing this work is going to help your marriage feel easier. It's going to help life in general feel easier. You're going to feel more proud of the example that you're setting for your kids and feel confident that they have the skills to take it into their future relationships and the struggles will be much less for them. Okay, so go check out that masterclass. Reach out to me if you are wanting additional support and wishing you a happy new year. This next stage for your marriage gets to be so, so good like surpass your wildest dreams. And watching this masterclass is a great first step to doing that.
I hope you enjoy this episode. And if this resonated with you, let me know. Send me a message on Instagram. I'd love to know how you connected with this episode and just love to hear back from listeners. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Even though things might feel heavy right now, it can be temporary. So don't lose hope. Check out this masterclass and I'll catch you back here on the next episode. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. I would so appreciate that. And if you love what I share here, then you're going to love and want to join my free private Facebook community that's also called Marriage and Motherhood. I hope to see and connect with you in there. Otherwise, I'll catch you back here next week for the next episode. Bye.